exalted, I pray in the name of Jesus. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And everybody said amen. You can be seated. I want to start off with just a couple things. I hope that you will give me liberty to say these things. I hope that they're not offensive. I don't know what your vocabulary is that you use in your home. So if I say a word that you don't normally use, please, uh, parents, uh, please forgive me. And, and all of you young people, if, if this contradicts what you're taught, uh, this one word I'm going to say here in just a second, I, I don't want this to contradict that. Your parents are right, and I'm wrong for the, for the moment. But I want to use this one word, I hate. I know that's a strong word, and I mean exactly what I'm about to say. I hate, or if you don't like that word, I strongly dislike. I strongly dislike fake things. I hate fake gravy. My wife knows this. I hate fake rice, or I mean minute rice. I mean, uh... I hate fake leather. Um, I like to smell. I like real leather. Um, I, there's something about it. I've, I've had it all. I've, I've tried the man-made stuff, but I just, I like the real stuff. I've found in shoes. I like the ability. I can get my shoes resold, and, and I'm ready to go. I don't have to go buy seven or eight pairs to equate to one pair. It's a lot cheaper for me. I like, I like real leather. I don't like fake leather. I, I really don't like... I don't like fake handbags. I know you ladies, I'm not trying to be offensive. If you got one or you, you I mean, I'm not against any of that. Trust me. And my wife, she still purchases uh, fake handbags, I would call them. But they're not my favorite. And I'm, I'm just being honest. So if you don't like honesty, it's okay. You can, you can put your earplugs in for a little bit and just don't listen. But I'm just being open. I don't like uh, fake handbag. I like the real thing. I like the real leather. I don't like the pleather, what they call it, and the plastic, and I don't like it peeling off in, you know, a month from now. That, to me, is not attractive. I, you know, I look at the zippers. I look at the stitching. I like to see if it has that wax coating, you know, authenticity. Um, you know, I, I don't like fake watches, and I don't really wear a watch that often, but if I was going to, I'd really want the real thing. I, I, I'd feel the weight of it, they say. I'd I'd look and see what kind of movement's in there. If it's got some type of quartz, uh, you know, dial movement, or if I, was, if I had the, uh, the funds to purchase a, a Rolex, I, I, would, I would look really closely. The Cyclops lens, it, the magnification of the date, I'd be checking that out because I certainly wouldn't be spending the extra cash uh, if I was getting a fake because I really, really do not like fake things. But, but I will say this, I love... I love real things. I love real things. Now, now here, here's something. I don't know if you've already you've looked this up. If you haven't, you're going to look this up tonight. I know you are. I don't know. Have you, have you looked at the, the, the world's most expensive sandwich? Any of you? Have you, have you seen this online? Have you look, seen the world record, the most expensive sandwich? I mean, it's here in America. And this thing has some exotic to it that's that's unbelievable i mean they're using some exotic uh champagnes that go into the dough of the bread things that i can't even pronounce the cheese there's only twenty five thousand uh, cows of this particular breed in the world and they're only found in far southern italy i believe it is and they only lactate at certain times of the year and they're only fed uh wild strawberries and that gives a certain uh, taste to the, their, their, the cream of their milk. And you, you get the sweetness and the fruitiness. And, and there's like a licorice to it. They tell me. I haven't had it. I'm just saying. It's a, it's, it's a grilled cheese is what it is. It's the most expensive. But it sounds wonderful to me. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, I like real stuff. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know what your house rules are. Maybe you love. I mean, I'm, again, I'm not trying to be offensive. But maybe you like processed food cheese you like that fake stuff you like that man-made contrived that stuff that won't ever mold you can keep it there for seven or eight years and you're still like it's good i only eat one slice a year but i don't like that i want my cheese to mold if it's done got old you know that kind of goes together so i like real i like real and i'm just thinking about that cheese sandwich now because it's got a, a south african uh, lobster bisque that you dip it in i i 
Oh, oh, one of the more important things. It's got, it's got 24 karat edible gold all inside of it. And, and they say, they say that if you eat it just right, you can actually get an instant grill. Like, it, it'll, it'll coat you. I'm just thinking, like, if nothing else, I'm flying out to New York. I want I want an instant grill, you know, eating a grilled cheese instead of bread, you know. I don't know. That's just me. I, I like real, I like real stuff. That's just me. I think we're all, I mean, you may like some fake stuff. I mean, I'm sure to some degree we all have some things that are, are fake. Maybe that perhaps is all that we can get at, at the time, or, or perhaps that's what we really like. And, and I'm not here to judge that. But I believe that we all could come to, on the same page that there are some things that, that just, I mean, they have to be real. They, they can't be fake. So for example, let, this coming uh, Friday, I mean, how many of you that actually work, you want them to give you a fake paycheck? They're going to pay you out. They'll cash it right there, give you a monopoly money. That'll really work, won't it? The mortgage company will love you. Like, oh, yes, you got you to gotta get this. I'm going to pay you in some serious monopoly money. You know, there's just something about that that just, it, it just doesn't really work. And, and I think most of us are on the same page when it comes to, there are just some things that have to be real. They have to be real. And so that's the reason that I, I picked this particular um, this particular passage, and I'm going to make a little turn here, and that's the reason you might be trying to figure out how are you going to get the genuineness of the gospel. I'll show you here in a second, but I want to take the first part of that, and it says uh, fools make a mock at sin. Fools, they, they make a mock at sin, or as the New Living translations, fools make fun of guilt, um, uh, but the godly acknowledge it and seek reconciliation. The Orthodox Jewish Bible says fools uh, mock at guilt, uh, but those among the Yeserim, the upright ones, there is raton or favor. Um, the Proverbs 14 and 9 we're talking about, Proverbs 14 and 9 in the Good News translation says that foolish people don't care if they sin. They don't care if they sin, but good people, they want to be forgiven. And here, here's what I, uh, what I want to bring to you, and, and, and just a little glance by here, is uh, observing and listening to various, uh, various things that are communicated in our world. And, and the gospel ha is almost genericized. It, it, it means something, but it really doesn't mean what it's supposed to mean. And I hear a lot of definitions of the gospel and really how it applies to our life. And what's disturbing to me is when I look at the, uh, the gospel that's sometimes described, it's almost a permission to stay as you are. There's no need for change. You, you don't really. I mean, you can, you can actually partake of the gospel, uh, but still never change. And that sounds like a lot of love towards us, that God sees how deplorable we really are, but yet he leaves us there. You know, it's like your child falls in the mud puddle, and you're like, hey, <laughs> push him right back in. No, there's just something about that that doesn't make sense. I mean, God is uh, such a loving father, but yet he looks at it and says, you know what? I'm going to make a way. You don't have to do nothing. And in fact, there's not going to be any life change in your, your own personal life. No, there's no going to be no transformation. I'm just going to leave you the way that you are. In fact, there's just really by admission, there's no hope. <laughs> Isn't that one? Isn't that good news? The gospel's the good news. Isn't that good news? There's really no hope. I mean, it's really bad news. Well, how many, how many like that idea? Do you like that? That the, actually the good news that some portray is actually, they, they, it's almost a snickering at, it's almost a mocking at sin or the allowance or tolerance of. And then again, I, I'm being very sensitive here. Uh, of course, we're all uh, Human beings, we, we all deal with this, and the Bible is very clear that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we're all on the same page here. We, we have a desperate need for, for the true gospel, a realness, not, not something that's contrived or man-made or, or presented to us. And that's, that's why, because if we're not careful, we will have a gospel that won't change anybody. Uh, we'll, we'll have a Jesus that can't save anybody. We'll have a God that's impotent. We'll have a church that's really a 
country club and we'll have evangelism that's just a marketing ploy and a scheme. That's the reason. Because there's just something about that. It's kind of like taking Tylenol for a headache. But if the gospel that we, we speak about is only seeking relief from life's pressure and never seeks for the true resolution of the conflict in our own soul, it really never addresses the true issues of the heart. Obviously, we're not interested in true life change. We're only interested in dealing with the symptoms. We don't even go to the deeper issues, which is the sickness of our soul. I want a real experience with God. I want a real one. I don't need it or require a gospel that's palatable to everybody, but it's not good for anybody. A gospel that's man-made, man-concocted, a processed gospel that is designed for the masses, but it doesn't produce a change in anybody. I want the real gospel. I want life change. I don't know about you, but I go through real life, and sometimes life is difficult, and I need a God that's bigger than myself. There are situations I go through, and I need his help. I need him to deliver me. I don't need something that says, well, you don't need deliverance. Pardon me? I need deliverance. I need somebody to set me free. I know where he found me. I'm telling you, I was deep down into the dark uh, dungeon. I, I'm telling you, the, the, the doors were closed. It was cold. It was lonely. I was shackled. And it was that day that the Lord came down and his light shined into the room and he set me free. He brought me out of the dungeon. And I'm not going back in there. I need the gospel. I need the realness of the gospel. But here's the thing. A lot of people's gospel is fake. It's not real. Now, I'm not here to pick on anybody's particular direction. You should be able to search the scriptures. That's what you're supposed to. I'm not, I'm not here to define it all for you. But it's plainly there. But you should search it out. And that should be your God. It should not be based on, well, here's our tradition, and this is all that we're going to base it. No, 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 no. You need to go back to the original. Pastor's been telling us about this. we got to go past, you know, 300 A.D. No, no, that's, that's way too late. we got to go all the way back. Go back to the original pattern. That's how you can get way off if you start getting away from the original pattern. we got to go back to the original pattern. we got to go back to the old ways is really what it's about. But here's the thing. A lot of people have what I would call a fool's gold gospel. A fool's gold gospel. It looks like the real thing, but it's really not the real thing. And let me just make a couple, three just really uh, quick points that distinguishes the two, and it, maybe it'll help you out. One thing is, is gold, it glistens in every angle and lighting. But, but fool's gold, or pyrite as it's known, which is fake gold, it has to be in the, the perfect lighting. It has to be at the right angle, but it only, it only shines. It, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't really glisten. It doesn't really have a, a, a permeation to, to what's, what you see. There is a remarkable, in fact, you turn it the wrong way, all you see is some other things. You see some dullness, and you see that it's not shiny everywhere, and you see there's a splotchiness to it. Gold is is very soft it's very soft and it can take a beating it will not perish but fool's gold or pyrite will crush and it will dissipate it will shatter real gold will bend if you you pound it you could put them side by side you pound it you can look at on youtube if you want to see examples of this you might even be fooled by them, but you, you put the pressure on it, and one, it's going to flatten out. It's going to retain its rigidity. It's going to have some strength, but the other one is just going to totally disintegrate. Thirdly, gold has soft edges around the, uh, soft round edges, but fool's gold has really sharp angles, has a lot of uh, angular uh, presentation to it. And here, here's the thing, and what I mean by that is, is both of them, they look the same, but really what reveals them is difficulty. When you put them under stress, it determines which one it really is. 
You see, when you're talking about this just power of positive thinking, you're talking about positive speeches, you're talking about motivational speaking in a setting like this, I mean, that happens often. But yet when people walk out the doors, there's no life change. In fact, I propose to you, it's one of the most damaging things to the gospel. Because if the gospel doesn't change your life, so what? If your life witnesses a gospel of sort, in quotations, that doesn't change you at all and has no impact, how powerful is that gospel? Why should I even consider your gospel? Why should I even watch any longer and watch your life? But if I see something that is real, anybody here today that knows what I'm talking about, that how God can deliver God can save to the uttermost. I'm telling you, I've seen it in, in my own uh, life and growing up. I, I saw what it did to, to my father, and he was an alcoholic and a drug addict. And I, I saw the terribleness of that And when he left my mom and left us deserted and abandoned us. But I also saw how God was able to stand in and do a miracle. I don't know how he brought them back together. I don't understand how out of the blue that he would say that I'm going to get off of cocaine and we're going to get back together. I know we're divorced, but I want to seek uh, reconciliation because I want to be with my kids because statistics say that that won't ever happen. I don't know how that happened, but what I can tell you is the gospel changed my life because it changed my family's life. It changed my dad. It took him off of alcohol. It took him off of cocaine and various other addictions and things. And I'm here today because the gospel is real. The gospel is real and it's not fool's gold. Only a fool will mock at sin. Only a fool will uh, create some type of religion or theology that allows sin to still have habitation or have reign or have dominion. Only a fool would allow that. Now understand this. I'm not being mean. When we talk about a fool, it's a very specific designation. It's one that despises wisdom or one who mocks when guilty, or one who that is quarrelsome, or one who is unrestrained by law or even general morality. They are lawless. They are immoral. They, they really don't have any type of moral uh, guidance or system. And so when I speak of that, we have to make a distinction because even the Bible tells us that in the last days, there will be those that will have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. They will ever be learning. They'll have information. They'll, they'll have all these things, but they'll never come to the fullness of truth. In other words, they got fool's go gospel. They got fool's go gospel. What they've got is something that won't bring transformation or life change. But let me just tell you, just because there's a fake... Just because there's something that, that isn't real, and, and we have to make that distinction. Why, why does this matter? Because if you buy into it, and I don't care, any of us can buy into a gospel that's not really the gospel. Because we have in our minds, like, well, when you have the gospel and you come to Jesus Christ, everything's easy. You don't go through difficulty. You don't go through hardships. You don't go through trials and afflictions. And in fact, uh, everything's pretty easy. And your banking account, I mean, uh, readjust. I mean, that's all it takes. Just one moment and everything in the whole world dissipates and everything is euphoria. I mean, it's just perfect. Everything's great. That's not true. That's not true. And then when you go to real life the next day after that moment of emotionalism only, then real life hits and, and wow, there, you're left void and empty and don't know how to handle it because the real gospel will make change. You'll leave you won't be leaving your commitment and, and everything at the altar. You'll actually be empowered. In fact, you can come in contact with the real gospel, like Pastor's been telling us, outside of this church. The real gospel is not confined to this building. The real gospel has complete freedom and actually sometimes even more freedom. Why? Because it's getting out of our mind and our being bound to this location. And all of a sudden, the God of this world can say, oh, wow, you finally took me out of box and now I can really be God. I can be bigger and I, I'm not defined by a box. And, and really, the gospel is real and it's waiting to change your life. And it's waiting to change those that you know's life. That's why it matters. Because if you're, not, if you're mistaken, 
you may somehow been sold a lie, somehow, whether it just happened. I don't know how it happens sometimes. Sometimes we just believe things, and we're just, we're struggling, and, and we still are confused. A false gospel will leave you confused. It'll leave you frustrated. It, it'll cause you to keep wondering and, and, and wondering about what, why is this going on? I, I don't have purpose. I don't understand and, and all that. But when that, that question gets answered and when you come to know that, that when you find, and this is the second and, and the last thing I want to talk about, when you find out that there is a, a genuineness to the gospel, it's God's genuine good news. There really is good news that that God did provide a way. When we say the gospel, we're talking about like what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse uh, 3 and 4, that Jesus Christ came and, and that he died, and, but then he was buried and that he rose again. Yes, we're talking about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. But before you get there, we're talking about the God of this world that came and he became a man, that, that we understand that it was God that was in Christ. He was reconciling the world into himself. We, we understand that in Jesus Christ, that all that we are to know and everything about God, the fullness of the Godhead was in Jesus Christ. He was the express image of God. He was the very God that they had served up to that time. That God came down and became a human being tempted in every Every way like we are but yet without sin that same God because we know the Bible says there's one there's one God and one mediator the man Christ Jesus and so we know that it was that it was Jesus that came and we know that Jesus came and he suffered many things and he was he was wrongly accused and he was ridiculed and he was slapped and he was mocked and he was stripped naked and put upon a cross and he died to be in our place so that we can go to heaven and be in his name. He provided a way to bring us back to correct communication with him and provision. He provided a way for a genuine gospel. He provided a way for you to be delivered. He provided a way that you could be saved no matter what you have done in your life. It does not matter how deep the sin is. God is able to reach down into the depths of every heart. There is no darkness that can conquer his light because he's greater than that. That's why there is a genuineness to the gospel because it's God's good news. And God's good news, it brings life and life transformation. God's good news brings hope. It gives you hope because if God is real, then his good news has got to be real too. If God is dead, then there's no reason to believe it. And if, if the gospel is dead in your own life, then there's no reason to believe it. But if God is real, and you look around, and how many know today that your life has been changed? You begin to look at how God had took you from where you are, and now where you are right now. He took you from where you were to where you are right now, but you also sense that he's bringing you to a place you've never been before. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? An expectation that God is good, and he has all things in control. The genuineness of the gospel, you see, when you look at the life of Jesus, mathematically speaking, you want to talk about proofs. The odds of anyone fulfilling this, this amount of prophecy, there was, there was over 300 uh, various prophecies that were given before Jesus came on the scene. And some mathematicians put together some names, uh, put together some numbers, and it said, you know, if someone was to fulfill eight of those prophecies, if one person could fulfill eight of those prophecies, there's over 300 references, specific uh, prophecies, there's over 300 that, that was mentioned that Jesus Christ fulfilled. But if, but if someone could, could be able to accomplish eight of those prophecies, that would, that would be the equivalent of, of one chance in 10 to the 17th power. But if one person could fulfill 48 prophecies, that would be one chance in 10 to the... 157th power but one person fulfilling 300 plus prophecies only Jesus only Jesus could do that that's why we know that his gospel is true because he was able to fulfill every prophecy before he showed up on the scene no question we believe stuff there's not even close to that amount of proofs 
You sitting on that chair right now. How many of you all understand? I know there's some of you, but how many of you tonight know all of the molecular uh, definitions and the compositions when you get into physics of, of why that it's able to sustain your body weight? I don't know, and I don't want to know, actually, <laughs> to be honest. But the truth is, there's a lot of information there, and you can break it down. I don't need to know. What I know is it's real, and I can sit down on that chair, and I'm going to tell you, I know that his way is real, if nothing else, because I've seen what he's done in my own personal life. My life today, I'm not a drug addict. I'm not an alcoholic. I have not left my wife. I have not abandoned my children. I'm not a statistic. Statistic says that's what I'm supposed to do. All of the odds are in that direction. I have been broken free of that. God has done a work. I'm so thankful that he's done that work. But it says this, but among the righteous, among the righteous, there is favor. There is favor. And that's what I want to bring to you. A fool will mock at sin. A fool will ignore sin. A fool will, will create a way out of it that doesn't have to deal with it. But the righteous, those that are upright, those that are trying their best. You know, when we look at the death, the burial, and the resurrection, we partake of that when we partake of the gospel. It's through the, our death of ourselves. We repent. The Bible says that it challenges us to repent of our sins. The, the word repent literally means to change one's mind. So it comes right directly with our thinking, and it says, you know what? For you to repent, you're going to have to change the way you're thinking. And we understand that only God can help us in that, but it starts with us saying, okay, I need to change some stuff. And that's why today I ask you internally to begin to ask yourself, how much change has been going on in my life lately? Let's look at the proof. Let's not look at the, the theories. Let's not look hypothetically or what it's supposed to be if everything's perfect. No, let's look at real life and ask yourself how much life change has been happening lately. Is the gospel that I believe in real or is it fake? And you answer that. I'm not here to answer it for you. But I've been searching this. I've been digging this out. I've been searching my heart because there's a desire in my heart. Like I said earlier, I do not like fake. And I don't want fake in my life, especially when it comes to eternity. I want to change my thinking no matter what it is. If it's not right, I want it to be right. I want my thinking to be real and in alignment with the Word of God. Because if I know if I do that, then God will bring total life transformation. This is not some type of special type of diet or a regimen or all these other things that you do and you last about 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and then you just kind of fall off the ship and drown in the sea in the ocean of life, you know. I'm talking about true soul change when the gospel get, begins to get deeper and the things that our pastor's been talking to us about, we're talking about the righteous. They will, they will obtain favor. Now, when we look at favor... That word, when you translate it over into the New Testament, it's very clear. That word is grace. The, the righteous will receive grace. It's not about being perfect, Sister Leah. If that's the case, if that's the requirement, we don't even need a gospel because none of us meet the requirements to even approach it. But the reality is, is that we need the gospel. We need a God that's bigger than us. We need a God that is not bound by the, the natural realm or, or what normally happens, but a God that's able to break through the barriers. And when we come to him and we, we repent of our sins, and the Bible tells us very clearly that we are to be baptized into his name. We are to go underneath water in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of our sins. When we go down into the water, all of our sins are washed away. And the Bible says that we put on Christ. We put on Christ. That is a tremendous thing to know that we can now put on the righteousness of God. We don't have to live life with our righteousness, but we actually put on the gospel. We put on the, the true life of Christ. But then it doesn't stop there, just like the resurrection. Then we are to receive, freely receive, the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
that promise is for you and those before you, but, but for you and to your children and, and your children's children. It's to, it's to extend beyond our lifetime if the Lord would tarry because this is about there is a realness. So, so let me just uh, bring this home uh, today. The genuineness of this is God will bring a true life change. And no longer will there be an excuse even to the world. Because now, as you began to receive grace, grace enables you to do what you could not do before. Grace empowers you. It is by the grace of God. It's not by works. It's not by men's actions. It's not by your righteousness, the Bible tells us. But it is the gift of God. Not so that no man should boast. It's by the grace of God. And here, here's what I want to end today, if I can, talking about the grace of God and why this matters and why, why because I, I firmly believe that, that if we begin to take this in and take in what our pastor's been, been talking about and been challenging us, and, and when we have a false system, we, we buck against anything, anything that seems a little bit more authentic because it is authentic. And, and when it gets under stress, uh, you know, sometimes if it's fool's gold, it, 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 it collapses. But, but when it's genuine and real, then, it, then it's ready to receive whatever comes its way. And that's why I love what our pastor's been talking about is there are so many people that need to know about this life change. There's so many people that they, they deserve to know Jesus Christ. They, they need what we have. And it would be such a shame if we kept it here. It would be as though as there is a cure for Alzheimer's or there actually is a cure for the AIDS virus or there actually is a cure for various cancers and things to find out that millions and millions and even billions of people that have to die before someone stands up and says, oh, by the way, I actually have the vaccine. I actually, I had it all alone. I'm so sorry. I waited too late for some, but here it is. It would be such a shame because what we have is the true answer for the world. We are supposed to be the light of the world. We are supposed to be those that push back darkness, and we can because the gospel of Jesus Christ is real, and it's not fake, and that's why that we can go outside of these walls and pray for the sick and they shall recover. That's why we can go outside of these walls and begin to pray for some. And if they're bound by addictions and various things, that the gospel is real. It can reach them right where they are. It can reach them at Walmart. It can reach them in our work. It can reach them in our schools. The gospel is real and his name is all powerful. If we can just believe, if we could just believe, we need the grace of God because we, can't, we cannot deliver the gospel to the world without the grace of God. We'll struggle all day long trying to wrestle with pastor. I love what pastor's been. I love the word of God. And if, you, if you've been not uh, listening or you've been away for a little bit, you really need to go back and pull it up on YouTube because our pastor has got a word from God. I, I, I don't know how much more God's got to speak for us to, to, to understand that, that God's voice is coming to us. And I don't know how much more he needs to reiterate it, his word. And I, I mean that. I, I, I've been praying. I'm fasting. I've been seeking. I've been asking God. I want to know. I want to be in unity with my pastor. But I'm going to tell you, he's right. And if your version of the gospel is bound to this building, you're wrong. And I don't mean that to be too heavy, but here's what I want to show you. I want to end with this. In Acts chapter 4, verse 33, I'm going to read this in the Amplified Classic Edition. And it says, this is speaking of the apostles, and with great strength and ability and power, the apostles delivered their testimony, what? To the resurrection to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace, loving kindness and favor and goodwill rested richly upon them all. Oh, our world needs a real, genuine gospel, not a deluded one, 
not a reprocessed one, not a edited one that's more approachable or more marketable. They need the real gospel, and we really don't have to defend it. It'll defend itself. And one of the greatest defense of the gospel is when the righteous, when the righteous, those that actually want to do what's right, that's what it's meaning, when those that really listen to the pastor and hear his voice and say, you know what, um, that actually kind of challenges my thoughts of what God would do, but you know what, I'm going to do it. And we feel the stress and we feel, feel the pressure, but then all of a sudden God says, but, but to the righteous, there will be favor. But to the righteous, there will be strength. But to the righteous, there will be an overshadowing of power that you could not have had without stepping out. I, I, I feel and I sense, and, and, and if you're a guest today, listen, what we're talking about, it's real. If you've never experienced the forgiveness of God, this is a great time to be forgiven of your sins. It's very, very easy. It doesn't even take very long. It's very quickly. All you have to do is, is open your mouth and, and say, God, I, I believe what I've heard today and I want to make some changes today. That's, that's where it starts. And that's really, that's all you really need to focus on right now. Don't, don't try, to, try to figure all this out. And God is here today. I know that we're, we're going to have time of fellowship. I know that. But I feel the grace of the Lord in this place. I feel an empowering of the Holy Spirit. I feel a confirmation is what I feel of everything that our pastor's been talking about. I feel like God is saying, okay. I've heard your prayers, I've seen your fasting, but now it's time for my grace to settle upon my people. I'm going to empower you to do that which you cannot do. I'm going to put my grace upon you. Yes, fools, they'll, they'll, they'll look the other way. They won't even care about the loss. They'll find a way to take pleasure in the sins of other people, the Bible tells us in Romans. But, but, I, but I'm telling you, if you want to do what is right, what is right is that the gospel of Jesus Christ can be made known and to all men. Every family in your community deserves to hear the gospel. Everybody at your school, hear me out, deserves to hear the gospel. Everybody deserves to have the opportunity to come and encounter with Jesus Christ. Everybody deserves to have their family tree radically changed for the rest of their life because that's what the gospel does the gospel takes somebody that's on drugs and it takes it away from them it'll take alcoholism out of that family tree and it won't ever return again because that's what the gospel will do and it'll do it in your life but it'll do it in the lives of other people and if you believe that will you please stand i feel
receive that right now. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Begin to seek him. Seek him for your own self right now. This whole altar area, I know that many of you are familiar with this, but I want this to be a special place of consecration today. I want this to be the place. You, you feel free to pray anywhere today, but I, if you would like God's supernatural power to reach down and empower you, why don't you come forward? If you would like to receive what you've been praying about, I would like you to come right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. This world needs our commitment to God. This world needs the gospel. This world needs to know about His good news. His ability to set the captives free on the streets. This world needs to know about His deliverance. This world needs to know about salvation, that they do not have to be bound. God will make the way. God will bring the provision. Yeah. 